Okay, today we're going to review glomerular filtration, fun with filters. So some basic ideas about filtration uh, are shown here. First of all, filtration is passive, so that means no energy is needed to do it, so you don't need ATP. It's also non-selective, so what that means is this is the analogy of pulling everything out of your closet right as long as you can hold on to it so there's no specialized channels or pumps or anything like that if it fits through the holes it gets filtered okay we're gonna see that here in a second filtration is driven by gradients uh, mainly it's the hydraulic pressure that pushes the blood through the holes that comes from the heart and the rate of filtration which we call GFR glomer excuse me glomerular filtration rate boy that is hard to say is one of the most heavily regulated variables in the body so in women GFR is 115 milliliters per minute in men it's 125 mils per minute and it basically does not change so a pretty simple analogy is shown here. So the glomerulus represented by uh, a regular uh, kitchen strainer, Bowman's capsule, which is the tubular element that surrounds the glomerulus. That's a pot that you're straining into. And then the filtrate, uh, which you can't see here, of course, but that's anything that can fit through the holes of the glomerulus. So anything that gets filtered, we call very simply and clearly the filtrate. So Flops and I were in the kitchen, of course, thinking about what fits through the holes and trying to give you some pictures that will help you to remember. Obviously, water and anything that is dissolved in the water in the plasma of the blood is going to fit through the holes. So lots of stuff dissolved in blood plasma, salts, nutrients, all the glucose in the blood, all the organic wastes. All that dissolved stuff is going to fit through the holes. And then, of course, it's going to be the process of reabsorption, which is going to bring all that material back into the blood because you need it, right? But you got to filter it all uh, to begin with. Big things like cells and proteins do not fit through the holes. So those are things that are not filtered, at least not under normal um, conditions. Okay, so basically we have a nephron here. This is the glomerulus, right? Just a ball of capillaries. They're specialized. They're fenestrated capillaries, so they have holes in them. We've got the peritubular capillaries that surround all the tubular elements. The blood comes in through the afferent arteriole. Here's where the filtration occurs, between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. So anything that gets filtered enters the tubular elements shown here in purple. Uh, right here. Anything that doesn't fit through the holes or is not being filtered leaves via the efferent arteriole. And again, the fact that this is an arteriole and not a venule is of significance because that's what's going to keep the pressure in the glomerulus fairly high. The net outward pressure for my physio people is 10 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so here's a close-up of the filtration site. The afferent arteriole, the blood comes in. We have the actual glomerulus covered with these podocytes. These are the foot cells that have little extensions all over them and little slits, and everything gets pushed through all of these holes into this space. This is the glomerular capsule, so this is filled with the fluid that we call the filtrate, and then the filtrate will move through the rest of the tubular elements, starting with the proximal convoluted tubule. This is a, a scanning electron micrograph showing you what it actually looks like, and just emphasizing again all of the slits through which this material is being passed. So you've got to imagine the blood under that 10 millimeters of mercury outward pressure moving through the finistrae, these windows as they're called, uh, the holes of the glomerular capillary, through this basal lamina. These are the, in cross-section, the, the feet of the podocytes, right? So it's being pushed through all these holes, and here's the lumen of Bowman's capsule. This is the filtrate, shown in yellow. Here's the amazing thing about GFR. GFR is driven by blood pressure. Blood pressure changes constantly. This is MAP, right, the mean arterial blood pressure. So this is calculated from systolic and diastolic pressure. Look at this range of, of blood pressure. This is normal right here. Over this entire range, GFR, shown on the Y, does not 
change. That's the extraordinary thing about it. If if blood pressure really falls off, so this would be in a medical, this is a medical emergency, you know, you've got a, a hemorrhage or some real, you know, sudden drop in blood pressure, you're not going to get any filtration. So basically you, you're going into renal failure here. If you have extraordinarily high mean arterial pressure, this is really, really high, you're, you're going to blow uh, the vessels at that pressure. So how is it possible that under such a huge range of blood pressure, the GFR is not changing. And there are three methods that control GFR. The first one is the autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic will increase, excuse me, the sympathetic division, that's your flight or fight, that will cause GFR to drop in cases of, you know, flight or fight, obviously. Uh, you've got autoregulation. This is pretty straightforward. The afferent arterial senses blood pressure, and constricts or dilates to keep GFR constant. So for example, if the blood pressure rises, then the afferent arterial will constrict, so GFR stays the same. If blood pressure falls, obviously this is within you know reasonable limits, but over the wide range that we saw in the previous slide, if blood pressure falls, the afferent arterial dilates, so GFR stays the same. The third thing that we have to regulate GFR is this tubuloglomerular feedback. A long word, but it actually means that the tubule, this is the distal convoluted tubule, you notice it's shown right here, it's actually very, very close. It's right up next to the renal corpuscle. The cells, specialized cells of the distal convoluted tubule that we call the macula densa, they sense the volume of filtrate in the tubule. If the volume in the filtrate is too high, they send a paracrine signal through these cells, they're called juxtaglomerular cells, and they cause the afferent arterial di um, diameter to change. So in other words, if the filtrate volume is too high, the macula densa can tell chemically the afferent arterial to constrict, thereby keeping GFR constant. So again, the big take-home message is that GFR is one of the most tightly regulated variables in the body, three totally separate mechanisms that regulate it, and it's pretty impressive that over a very wide range of blood pressure, GFR does not change. Just wanted to end with something weird. This is called the Modern Toilet Diner, and this is in Taipei. And just goes to show you that uh, Man, the world is sometimes a little bit bizarre, even by our standards. Um, I've never seen anything like this, and uh, hopefully this is an idea that will not catch on in the States anytime soon.